In logic, we need to use ordered pairs, and for that we use set theory. But set theory doesn't care about order, so how does that work? Let me talk you through it. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be going through how we can get ordered entities, like ordered pairs, out of set theory, which doesn't care about order. So if that sounds good to you, do me a favour before we get going, give this video a thumbs up, that helps it reach more people on YouTube. And if you're liking this stuff, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so how is this going to work? How do we get ordered entities like an ordered pair out of set theory? So basically, we need a set theoretic representation of this entity here. Now, the key thing about an ordered pair is which one comes first, okay? It's A that comes first. So we need some way of marking out of these things, A and B, which one comes first. That's the key idea. So there's various different ways of doing this, some better than others. But before I get to that, I want you guys to think this through. So why don't you pause the video at this point, take a few minutes, see if you can write down a set that somehow represents that out of these two, it's A that comes first. So it's got to include A and B because that's what's in the ordered pair, but it's also got to somehow code up the fact that it's A that comes first. Have a think about that and then come back to the video and I'll show you a few different ways of doing it. Okay, how did you get on with that? I'm going to show you three different ways you could do this. Here's the first way and it's a bit of a cheat, but let's look at it anyway. So we want to say that A comes first and B comes second. So we do it like this. We put a set with A and the number one in it and then the set with B and the number two in it. And we put all of those things together, okay? So we're looking at this set here, and we've paired up A and number one and B and the number two. So it's obvious that A comes first and B comes second. This is the Hausdorff definition of ordered pair in terms of just basic sets. There's kind of a problem with this definition, however. So it works fine so long as A and B aren't themselves numbers. But imagine if B was the number one, and A was the number two, what would we get out of this? We would get this set. And because we don't care about order or repetitions, this set here is the same as this set here. So really, all we've got out of this is the set one, two. And that's not going to tell us that A comes first and B comes second, because in fact, A was the number two, B was the number one. We want two to come first, one to come second. That doesn't work at all. So this definition only works when we've got A and B that aren't numbers. Here's a different definition which tries to do the same thing. So we're trying to mark up the fact that A comes first. So what we've done is I've kind of paired up A with the empty set, but I've left B on its own as kind of a way of saying it's A that comes first. So the empty set here is marking the fact that A is going to be the one that comes first. This is the Viner definition. OK, it works fine. It's kind of pretty complex because we've got all these kind of extra brackets around here. For most purposes, you don't really need all of them. So you could just have A in the empty set and B here. But this is kind of to try and iron out some of the problems that get with that simplification. So it's a bit of an ugly kind of solution. Here's a third way of doing it. So here I've got one set containing just A and then one set containing A and B. And I put them all together in a set. And if you think about it, this is a perfectly good way of marking out the fact that it's A that comes first. This is the Kuratowski definition of ordered pair. And it's the one that most people use nowadays. So it's a bit simpler and neater than these other two. Why does it work? Well, because A appears here on its own, B doesn't appear there on its own. So that's a way of marking out that A is the thing that comes first. And it also captures the fact that B is there as well, so B must be the second thing. A little bit more precisely, what we want to say is A is being marked out here because it appears in both of these members, where B appears in just one of them. 
So the property of being the first element of the ordered pair is the property of being a member of both members of the set. Whereas the property of being the second thing, the property that B has, is the property of being a member of one of them, but not the other. Okay, so here's a challenge for you. Try and write down those properties, the property of being first of a pair, the property of being a second of a pair, just using logical notation plus membership. So you should have a uh, you should have a sentence with one free variable in it that in effect says that X is the first thing in the pair. And it can use language like, you know, for all X, for all Y, X is a member of Y, that kind of thing. So all of these definitions of order pair kind of differ in the way they look and the, the way they work. But there's one really important feature that they always share. And this is the basic most important point about order pairs. It's the identity principle that if an ordered pair a, B is identical to an ordered pair C, D, then A has to be identical to C. So the first thing in each of them have to be the same and B has to be identical to D. The second thing in each of them have to be the same. OK, so this is like the principle from sets that says set X and set Y are identical just in case they have the same members. For ordered pairs, it says that an ordered pair is identical to an ordered pair just in case they contain the same things in the same order. Right. So the first thing is the same. The second thing is the same and so on. So to show that any of these definitions is good, like to show that the Kuratowski definition is a good one, you would have to prove that it satisfies that identity. That's not super difficult to do, but it takes a little bit of thought. So if you're feeling brave, why don't you go through and try to prove this identity using the Kuratowski definition of ordered pairs. OK, so I've been talking about how to code up ordered pairs in terms of unordered sets, but it's not just ordered pairs we need to make logical models. We also need ordered triples, ordered quadruples, etc. How do we get ordered triples out of sets? Well, there's a really simple reduction, OK, a recursive idea in which we treat triples as pairs and then we treat quadruples as triples, etc, etc. So basically, here's the simple idea. So we're going to treat a triple as a pair like this. So it's a pair in which the first thing is also a pair and the third thing is just there on its own. OK, so here's a pair and here's a pair and put all that information together. That's what we're calling a triple. If you think about it, it does everything you want a triple to do. So what should a triple do? It should say a, B and C are included. And there's the first, there's the second, and there's the third. How does it do that? Well, it tells us that, yep, A, B and C are included. And it tells us that in this pair, that's the first and that's the second. And it tells us that this pair comes before C. So that's the, the first of the first, that's the second of the first, and that's the last one. So put all that together. That's first, that's second, and that's third. So we can treat triples just in terms of pairs and then quadruples will be understood in terms of triples etc 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 and all of that is going to boil down to regular common or garden unordered sets so last thing i want you to do today i want you to think through how would we code up this triple just as an unordered set using the kurtowski definition okay so we're going to use this plus the coding of pairs into sets. So why don't you pause the video at this point, think through how you do that, and then come back and I'll show you how we do it. OK, so let's see how we do it. We're going to code up this triple as uh, just a regular unordered set. So here's the first step. We treat the triple as pairs. We've got two pairs there, one here and one here. So we have to plug in the set theoretic reduction of each one of them one at a time. It doesn't matter which order we do it in. Uh, I'm just going to do the innermost one first and then the outermost one. So we're going to end up with a pair that's going to have C there, but it's going to have the Kuratowski account of pairs in this bit here. So I want the pair A, B. So that's going to be the set A on its own and A, B there. OK, so that's the intermediate step. And the last thing I want to do is take this pair here 
And again, do that Kuratowski thing and just write it out as a set. So I'm going to have to have, uh, that's going to be the first thing and that's going to be the second thing. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space. So let's see if we can get this right. So we're going to need um, this thing on its own. And then we want the set of that and that. OK, so it's going to be something like that. Perhaps I've missed out a bracket or something in there. It's really easy to miss out a few brackets here. So let's just check if we've got it right. I want a set here containing this one here. So I should have one extra bracket. So I've got two there. Oh, yeah, I've got three here. So that's looking right. And then over here, I want a set that contains C but also contains this one. So this bit here should be the same as that bit. Yeah, that looks right. OK, it's a real faff. It can be easy to get these things wrong. So if you're doing this kind of question, double, triple check. Hopefully you won't make any mistakes. OK, guys, thank you for watching this far. It got a little bit fiddly at the end there. So thanks for sticking with it. If you are finding this stuff useful, give this video a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications. If you do have any questions on this, leave me a comment down below. It's always good fun interacting with you guys, and I hope to see you back for the next video. <laughs>